Good morning to Sunday School on this October the 1st, 2023. We're now in the fourth quarter of 2023, and thank God for bringing us thus far. Only because of him. <laughs> and we are continuing in the book of Proverbs, going through very slowly, very methodically, um, and gaining such an understanding on God's word when it comes to the book of Proverbs. In the past, we would just skim through or pick our favorite ones, but we're going through every single proverb, and we're seeing what life-changing knowledge we are gaining. What we are doing is we are writing these notes, dividing them between the righteous and the wicked, and as we go down, as you make these notes, you're seeing the characteristics or the patterns of the wicked and the patterns of the righteous. We can look at them and say, okay, which does my life reflect? For example, I'm just going back to, we've just finished chapter 13. We are in chapter 14. But if I was to go through the characteristics of the wicked under chapter 13, we have that he opens his lips and invites his own ruin. He craves, yet has nothing, acts disgustingly and disgracefully. His wickedness undermines himself, or it backfires on himself. He pretends to be wealthy, yet has nothing. His riches are his ransom, so he's willing to do anything to keep what he's got. His lamp is extinguished. His arrogance leads to strife. The wealth he obtains by fraud will dwindle. His contempt for it, he has contempt for instruction and will pay the penalty for it. So you see that life pattern. You can look at people and by their fruit, you can figure out where they stand. With the Lord. You ain't got to say a word. Just watch how they live. But when we come over to the righteous, looking at the same verses under the righteous, he guards his mouth and protects his life. He's fully satisfied by diligence. He hates lying. Righteousness guards people of integrity. He pretends to be poor, but has great wealth. You don't go around telling everybody what you got, right? You know, those people got to put it all out on Facebook, okay? He's poor. He has nothing to lose. He doesn't put his life his, his values in what he's got. His light shines brightly. He takes advice, which leads to wisdom. So you see the difference. And as you watch people live, you can see those patterns lived out. Okay? And that helps you to know where their heart is. It's one thing where your mouth is, but where is your heart? Out of the mouth, the heart speaks. And our homework for Proverbs, we have two sets of homework. Mm -hmm. The first one is by the end of this month, we have to write, what does Proverbs mean, to, what does Proverbs mean to me? Okay. You can just be one side of a letter size sheet of paper. You don't, don't go into any pistol. I don't have that time to that amount of time. But I want to know what does pro after having done what we've been doing, what does Proverbs mean to you? And by the end of the year, I would like to see, and I'm going to ask for your notebooks again, because I would like to see your notes on Proverbs up to the end of Proverbs. Right now, I'm actually on 18. Okay. I was hoping to see people pass me when I got the books last time. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I know your names. I know where you live. I take we, we take attendance every week. I would like to see seniors included. I would like to see your work on. Yes, I'm not leaving out the super seniors. Y'all don't think because I'm super senior I don't have to do it. No, no, you got to do it too. I would like to see by the end of the year that you have read through and made your notes for the remainder of Proverbs. Okay, so get with it. That means you've got a set time 
Get into a routine. Get it done. Velma's cracking the whip here. Owe it to our mom. Oh, yeah. They used to call my mother homework bean. No, she, she gave homework. That's where I got it from. That's right. <laughs> so for today, we are in Proverbs chapter 14. We're on page 656 in our cover to cover. The orange version, if you have the purple version, I'm not sure what page that's on. Um, contrast between wise and foolish. And we actually, we did the first verse. Every wise woman builds her house, but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. And we examined that one last week, or the last lesson. So today we are in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 2. And it reads, whoever lives with integrity fears the Lord. But the one who is devious in his ways despises him. As usual, we're open to your notes that you have done in advance and any thoughts that you have. And Sister Tina is going to be our runner today. So um, if anybody has anything they wish to add, please do so now. Whoever lives with integrity fears the Lord, but the one who is devious in his ways, despises him. Any thoughts to share on that? I had them, um, those that follow the right path, fears the Lord, and those that take the wrong path, despises him. Thank you. Deaconess Tyra? Those that are in the will of God, in the fear of God, not scared, but doing God's will. And I put prideful man is not puffed up. That's all to do with the first half right? Did you do anything for the second? Okay. You can ask Dallas. He who walks in uprightness reverently fears the Lord and obeys and worships him with profound respect. And he who is devious in his ways despises him. Okay. That's the, oh, go ahead. You can ask Silver. Thank you. You can ask. Under righteous, having a relationship with God brings a sense of not disappointing him. On the wicked, they make themselves a small god. They relish in sin. They relish in sin. Ooh-wee. Elder Seaman? But on the righteous, a righteous person is open to live by the will of the Lord and is willing to obey his words. But the wicked one is tricky and has no thought about following God's ways. They hate his ways. Hmm. Huh. Thank you. Tricky. <laughs> ah. hey, Reverend Stephen, am I seeing you? Yeah. Morning. I put on the righteous, fear the Lord, and live honestly by the word of God. And on the wicked, but the one who is underhanded in their ways despises God. Okay. Thank you, Brother Kenny. Yes, morning. Um, I put on, I was more or less, um, I brought things more to the present um, things, and I said, uh, under the wicked, I said, uh, a fool talks a lot of hogwash and often gets disappointed. On the righteous, I put, but he who utters wisdom protects himself. Mm hmm Okay. And uh, that, that reminds me of the scripture that I put up this morning, uh, basically saying the same thing. You protect yourself with what you say. And you damage yourself with what you say as well. Mother Sumner? On the righteous, I have the righteous person respects the Lord. And on the wicked, dishonest person hates the Lord. Right. Okay. Very good. You put all that together and you get a basic understanding. The one word that I was waiting for, listening for, I think Deaconess De Silva, I think you said it or 
somebody before you. Reverence. Okay. Again, we see that word fear. What does that mean? So I go to my concordance and I look up the words. Because to say fear means a lot of stuff. Does it mean we're afraid of God? No. Okay, so you've got to go to the concordance to make sure that you are understanding the context in which this is written. And the word is, even though it's, it's a Hebrew word, yore, and the, you have fearing, morally, reverent, afraid, fearful. Well, God doesn't want us afraid of him because we know his character. But he does want us to reverence him. Okay? So when you see that whoever lives with integrity reverences the Lord, respects the Lord, but he who is uh, devious, uh, well, in the King James Version, it says he that is perverse, right? So go back to Satan. Satan was Lucifer in heaven. Satan knows God. He knows how God works. He knows what God loves. So he comes down here and he perverts the things that God loves. He confuses. He is devious. So he who is perverse or devious despises God, disrespects God. You see how you got to dig a little deeper to get that understanding, all right? So it's not that the devious don't know God. People know God. They hear the word all the time but they take it and they take it to mean other things, all right? So that's where you see that difference. Um, so under righteous, like I said, I'm just going through and I'm writing down what I'm reading here in the book, but I have uh, under righteous has integrity, fears or reverences the Lord, okay? And under wicked, despises the Lord, devious, perverse. Okay? Has integrity, fears the Lord. Now, the only way you can have integrity in the Lord is you've got to know his word first. You have to know his character so that that's what you portray. Stay focused. If you live according to God's way, it's going to elevate you in the eyes of man. It has to. Especially on your job. Seriously. Right? Don't get caught up in what other people are doing. They may leave you out of a lot of stuff. That's okay. I came here to work. I didn't come here to get all caught up in all that other stuff anyway. And people are going to start saying you're dependable, you're trustworthy. You know, it's going to show. You don't have to say a word. Remember Joseph? Joseph wound up in jail, and where did he rise to in jail? He, he in jail. Where did he rise to in jail? He rose to the top just by his standards. Then he came out of jail and went into Potiphar's house, and where did he rise to in Potiphar's house? He went to the top. And then, where did he go after that? He went to the top. He went to the top in prison. He went to the top in Potiphar's house. And he went to the top in the palace. Just by living by his standards that he was taught. All you have to do is live by God's standards. And watch where God takes you. Ha! He will elevate you. You ain't got to say nothing. <laughs> he will elevate you. Okay? All right. So let's go to verse 3. The proud speech of a fool brings a rod of discipline. But the lips of the wise protect them. That's just what you said, Brother Kenny. Okay? The proud speech of a fool brings a rod of discipline but the lips of the wise protect them. Who's got something to share on that? 
You can ask Dallas. The lips of the wise, when they speak with godly wisdom, will protect them. And in the mouth of the arrogant fool who rejects God is a rod for his back. Mm -hmm. Arrogant fool. My, my, my. Yes, Deaconess the Silva. And the righteous, wise men speak in faith. And the wicked, no good comes out of the mouth of a fool. A fool is ignorant. Ah, you know what they say, empty vessels make the most noise, right? But does it do any good when it's tested? They put up a front, and you go and look behind, there's nothing there, okay? But that also lets you know that wise lips don't speak a lot. You don't have to do a whole lot of talking, okay? In fact, the more you learn the word, the more you learn, remember when I told you the Lord told me to shut up? Yeah. And he actually used those, or shut up, Dennis, shut your mouth. Because I used to have a sharp tongue. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hear it? No, you don't. No, you don't. I used to get smacked in the mouth a lot of times by my mother. Sharp tongue. Not necessarily rude. But cutting, that, that's a bean thing. <laughs> Come on, family. <laughs> All right. And the Lord had to say, shut up. He, he, didn't even, he wasn't even gentle about it. Shut up, Janice. All right. Use your mouth when you're supposed to. All right. And that protects you. All right. So, uh, under the righteous, protected by wise lips. And I'm looking that word up. Intelligent, skillful, artful, cunning, subtle, wise-hearted man. Okay? So, cunning, that can be used either way. Depends on your motivation. It says they're wise-hearted man. What's in your heart? What's going to come out of your mouth? And again, just sit back and listen to people talk. They don't realize how much they're revealing just by talking. You can learn a lot about people just by closing the one and opening the two. And you can, you can hear it. Protected by wise lips is under the righteous. And proud speech brings the rod of discipline. And I use the job a lot because that's where we see it. People who behave like that, you find they come under a written warning or something of that matter. Discipline is administered to those people who act outside of what they should. All right? The rod of discipline. And they get fired. If it comes down to it, then they get fired. It gets worse and worse. And they bring it on themselves. Verse 4. And also, not only do we have to be careful with our words, but our facial expressions as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Some of us wear our feelings on our sleeve. And we have to be careful of that. Okay. But again, it's, it's the, um, as we ingest the word of God, it does that change for us as well if we allow it okay and I, I I've had people who say there's a light around you I don't know what it is but it's something around you and I say it's just a word the more you fill yourself up with the word the brighter that light shines it's amazing and I don't know what it looks like I can't see it but people have said that and I say wow okay <laughs> I don't know what it is but I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing all right, and that's, that's it. Thank you. Awesome. All right, verse 4. Where there are no oxen, the feeding trough is empty. But an abundant harvest comes through the strength of an ox. I found that one very interesting. Anybody um, want to uh, comment on that one? Where there are no oxen, the feeding trough is empty. 
but an abundant harvest comes through the strength of an ox. Mm, yeah, people were stumped on that one. Well, they're reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chief Trot. I wrote plenty of food because of the strength of the ox, which is the worker who wants to work, who desires to work, not just there to get a paycheck. That's where I looked at it. And then for the wicked, I said, the pantry of the non-worker is always empty. There you go. Yep. Well done. Well done. <laughs> go ahead, Reverend Steve. Yeah, uh, I put under the wicked, I put don't expect to have when you're not willing to work. And on the righteous, I put through hard work, you will prosper and your cabinets will be filled. <laughs> oh, now you'll say yours. <laughs> Under the righteous, I wrote, hard work does not go unnoticed. Hard work brings increase. Under fools, can't get something out of nothing. Um, and then um, I wrote, a spotless house is not always a clean house. I don't know, what, I, I don't know why I wrote that. A spotless house is not always a clean house. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Out of Rogers? For the righteous, I put, what you put in is what you get out. The honest day's work for honest day's pay is a worthy principle. And for the wicked, I just put, uh, use your resources wisely. I love it. <laughs> Jen? But I remember the answer to this one. I left my um, under the wicked, I put no work, no food, no home. Under the righteous, I believe I put plenty work, plenty food, big house. I love it. I have nothing to say. <laughs> that was excellent. Excellent. Okay. Remember, you've got to go back in, and think in, in the context of which these were written, okay? They had oxen. That was their main source of work out in the field. They pulled the plow to plant. You got to spend money on them eating, cleaning up, all that stuff. Hello, right? I won't tell you the amount of money I had to spend on my car this week, okay? But if I don't spend money on my car, what's going to happen to my car? I need my car. Okay? Which means I need a job to work to pay for my car. So you have all this stuff. You have some people who have beautiful houses and don't want to pay to maintain them. Okay? You can't have something for nothing. All right, that's the principle. That's what we need to teach these children that are laying up at home expecting you to give them everything while they ain't working. Hello? Anyway, I move on. <laughs> Touch and go, okay? You don't work, you don't eat. When this family came, all the sons came in to eat and it was one son that didn't work. So the mama put the plate, the food there. So the daddy said, who's that for? Oh, no, he don't work. Take that plate up. And he soon found a jewel. That's right. Yeah. They tell you you're abusing your children now. If you did that, well, if that's abuse, I'll do it because they're not abusing me. Sorry. You don't work, you don't eat. Oh, Aldous Kent. <laughs> Description in the Bible, I can't remember exactly what it speaks about that. If you don't work, you ain't busy. Can't remember exactly where it is, but yes, I think we've done that one already. I think, but it does. It specifically says that you don't work. But, yeah, you have to give. You know, put your time in. A lot of them on the job want to come and get rewards, but they don't want to put in the time it takes. Hello. 
But, you know, they'll tell you you don't love your children if you don't feed them. No, I love them to teach them that they have to work. They have to earn it. All right? Remember we talked about that spare the rod, spoil the child? That's not in the Bible. It says spare the rod. You hate your child. You have to teach them discipline. And I don't mean punishment. I mean there are ways of doing things. We have to guide them. Parents, don't leave it up to the teachers. The teachers are supposed to support what you're teaching them at home, not the other way around. But that's where we've gotten now. Okay? So, yes, very good, those of you that saw through that. You've got to look at the context, the time at which this was written, and understand what he's talking about, or you will get lost. So I think everybody got that. I wrote strong ox, abundant harvest. And then in brackets, I wrote work ethic. Work ethic. And of course, on the wicked, no oxen, empty feeding trough. No food. You won't spend money on their food. You won't have any food for yourself. That's it. Verse 5. An honest witness does not deceive but a dishonest witness utters lies. That's kind of self-explanatory, I think. <laughs> yep. You speak the truth. Yes. Um, I have to add, under the wicked, I put, they can't handle the truth. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. <laughs> a few good men, Jack Nicholson, I know that one. Uh-huh. Yep. But that's also true. They can't even recognize the truth. Self-deception. You speak lies enough and it becomes the truth. That's what's going on in the world today. Love is love. Everybody's saying it so much now they actually believe it. Okay? But we understand the lesson last week. And funnily enough, we were talking about the four meanings of love. Agape, Storge, Filio, and Eros. And Dr. Jeremiah taught on that very thing all week. Okay? Excellent. Father Trot? Yeah, and also you can't um, trust these people with a false witness. Yeah, well, that's, that's I was going to speak on that. They get a reputation for being untrustworthy. Okay? And so... It goes back to, um, where was it? The, the proud speech of a fool brings a rod of discipline. They lie, 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 and nobody will trust them. So it comes back around anyway. Deaconess and... I would also like to expand on that they can handle the truth. I was um, in the presence of someone uh, two weeks ago, and... Christianity came up, and I started speak, talking to this person. And I tell you, as they say, no lie, they went off the chain. I mean, they attacked me. They did not want to hear the truth. I mean, she, she went off. I said, what? I, and that's why I read it. They can't handle the truth. I just said to her, I'll pray for you. What else could I say? Because whatever came out of my mouth, as a righteous person, I tried, she wouldn't hear it. So all I said to her, I'll pray for you. And she didn't even <laughs> take kindly to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I had said how some a man came at me um, sitting on the side of the road, I guess he had seen me on TV and he called me over and wanted to start having a conversation. But whenever I spoke, he spoke over me. And I said to him, oh, obviously you don't want to have a conversation. You want to have an argument. I don't have time for that. But whenever you're ready, we can talk. And I left. And that's, you, you got to know, come on. When to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away, and when to run. You don't have to be there trying to convince them of anything. You obviously saw that she had no interest in hearing what you had to say. So don't try. Walk away. Nothing wrong with that. 
So is that in the Bible and not to argue God's word or something like that? When Jesus sent the disciples out two by two, yes. um, hang on a minute, I'm going to look up uh, Matthew 6, 10 to 11. And he said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the town. Any place that does not receive you or listen to you, as you go out from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet for a testimony against them. So if they don't want to listen to you, shake the dust and keep moving. Mark 6, 10 to 11. Okay, God did not put us here to argue. We state our case. And you listen. You listen to the heart of the person that you're talking to. And if it's very obvious that their intent is to argue with you, yeah. then you end it. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to stay and move on. Hang on. Go ahead. I actually, um, that reminds me of a teaching Pastor done a few years ago that if you argue with someone that's really against you, they will turn around, turn your words around and make you look like a fool. Yes. So when that happens to me, especially when you draw up, I just say, okay, and walk away. Yeah, yeah. It brings you down to their level. And that's not what you want. But you've got to have your ears open to that. Some people genuinely want to know, and you'll get that. And then some people just want to argue with you. I'm not arguing. We can have a conversation. We can agree to disagree. But if you want to argue, nope, I don't have time for that. Deaconess and then Reverend. Yeah, after I spoke to her, I felt sad because I said she's going straight to hell if she doesn't change her mindset. Straight to hell. And that's where you pray for her. And, and still be kind. Because you've planted a seed, even if it doesn't look like it. you planted a seed. Yeah. And maybe at a time where she really needs, some, life is going to happen, yeah. and she will come back to you. If you're kind, then that path is open for her to come back and talk to you. That's why we have to be careful how we handle people, even in those situations. Right? Because we may be the one that that person who hates you more than anything else in life, will come back to talk to you about eternity. And so we have to be ready for that. So think of that as a gateway, not a closed door, especially where you're concerned. Okay, Reverend Stephen? I put on the wicked, uh, this honest witness will not hesitate to tell lies. And on the righteous, I put an honest witness doesn't look for personal gain. Doesn't look for personal gain? Yep. And doesn't hesitate to tell lies because to them that's natural. So they're not going to hesitate. The book of Revelation talks about how mankind will build sin one on top of the other like bricks, like the Tower of Babylon. And that's because sin is becoming so normal now. They don't even realize it's sin anymore. Abortion, homosexuality, drugs, it's all becoming normalized and becoming law. So they're doing it thinking it's the truth and it's lies and they're just building up, building up, seeing, 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 seeing and not even realizing it anymore. It's so normal. Thank you for that. Alda Seaman? I put the righteous words of truth from above. You can count on them. But the wicked one can only speak lies like the father of the devil. What's in will come out. Lies. Yep. And remember, Satan is the author of confusion. Your father, the devil. This stuff's serious. Serious. But when you look on TV, it's normal. It's normal. Okay, thank you. Wow. A lot came out of that one, didn't we? I thought it was self-explanatory, but you all took it on another level. That's okay. Yeah, I'm loving that. Amen. Okay, uh, let's look at verse 6. A mocker seeks wisdom but doesn't find it. But knowledge comes easily to the perceptive. Hmm, interesting. Yes, Aldo Rogers? 
Oh, sorry, Elder Rogers and then Deaconess. For the righteous, I put, a man who respects God and submits to truth gains knowledge easily. And for the wicked, mocker like, a f like the fool, looking for knowledge everywhere. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I like the, the righteous one. There's something there I was looking for on the wicked. Let's see if we can find it. Yes, Deaconess Allison. Morning. Um, for the wicked, I actually put, they think they know it all, but their minds are actually closed. And for the righteous, I put, a wise man seeks the knowledge by studying the word of God for themselves. And then that just piggybacked on your class from last week. Because now I have begun to do that with even my morning readings. So it really does clear up any um, maybe misconceptions you may have about things in the Bible. And then after Dr. Woods preached last week, I said, let me go back and read Judges. Because I had a conversation at work. And I just want to know, did they all buy the Bible that doesn't have the book Judges in it? Because that book is totally about Israel being judged all the time so um thank you because that really helps when you're studying the word of god so a wise man seeks and studies like i said the wicked most of them think they know it all anyway so the bible isn't their go-to book because they already know it all closed minds right so when you say closed minds and that's what i was gonna ask closed to what to the knowledge of god that's what I was looking for there, Alda Rogers. They seek knowledge without God. That's knowledge of the world, which is totally opposite of what God desires. And that's Satan's plan. So it all comes back around. Okay? Yes. For knowledge is easy for the one who understands because he is willing to learn. And his scoffer seeks wisdom and finds none, for his ears are closed to wisdom. Right. Make sure you say God's wisdom and they seek to learn and study because as Deaconess Allison noted and as we did the study last week of the concordance, people want to come and sit and absorb osmosis. They don't want to study and that's where it goes wrong. And I'm going to say it again. If all you're doing is listening to gospel music, not enough. If all you're doing is getting a daily devotional in the morning, not enough. If all you're doing is coming and sitting to pass the seam and preach, not enough. The scriptures say study to show yourself approved. You have to take the time to study because Satan knows the word. He tried to use it on Jesus. If he tried to use it on Jesus, what chance do we stand? And when Jesus went back to him, what did he use? The law. Because that's all he had at that time. He used the law. Do you know the word of God where you can use it against the enemy? Study. And don't go, don't go by what the world tells you about the Bible. <laughs> oh, mercy. Like you said, they think that they know it, but they don't. Love is love. How many of us have gotten backed in a corner by that? Love is love. love Which love are you talking about? But before we studied this, did you know that? Most of us didn't. Because, and we've been in church for decades. Okay? Because we come and we sit. And then we go home. And do we open the Bible? Yeah. Next Sunday. Like I said, your meal today, let that be the last meal you have till next Sunday. See how strong you are. If you make it. And not even food, water. The beverage that you drink today, let that be the last beverage you drink till next Sunday. You won't make it to Friday. Okay? But that's how we treat God's word. Same way. All right? I think we're going to leave it there. So that was verse 6. Yes. So under righteous perceptive, knowledge comes easily. 
through study. You've got to study. And under wicked, seeks wisdom without God, does not find it. Wisdom without God is foolishness. And that's what we're seeing going on. You know, when I um, put stuff on Facebook and the mockers and scoffers come, I say, oh, you're proving the word. Thank you so much. Hey, you're doing exactly what God said you would say and do. Yes, thank you for proving the word. They don't like that. But what can they say? They can't say anything because it's true. Don't forget your homework, those of you that came in late. End of the month, one paper on what Proverbs means to me. Write it in the back of your notebooks so that you remember. And then at the end of the year, all these notes should be up to Proverbs 31. So set yourself some regular time to do some study. This is a great walk through the book of Proverbs. Who wrote the book of Proverbs? Solomon. Who's Solomon? Whose son? David. David's son. Right. Very good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this book of Proverbs, Lord God, that is just showing us how to live from day to day. And not only how to live, Lord, but how to observe others and where their hearts may be so that we can be used by you to show your word, to show what living in your word is like. Thank you for the life of Solomon that we could have these writings for 2023. We ask, Lord God, that you look within our hearts, reveal anything that is not of you, that does not reflect this life of the righteous. Help us, Lord, to turn away, to turn toward you, so that we can reflect the light of your word to those who do not know you. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus who died and bled his blood for us, that we may have salvation through his blood and for your Holy Spirit who lives within us, comforts and guides us day by day as we read and absorb your word. Thank you, Lord, that it all fits and that it makes us fit for heaven. Thank you, Lord God. We honor you and we bless you and we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thanks.